All right. Hello uh, again. And uh, now we're talking about pruning uh, of muscadines. And uh, I do want to talk first about the, uh, the uh, um, how to make the correct cut. Um, again, we need to talk a little bit about uh, about um, names first. So we do have each shoot has at the, has at the, has at the bottom regenerative tissue, which contains also the basal bud. We usually do not count the basal bud. However, there can be fruitful shoots coming out of the basal bud. Most cultivars do that. Um, and then we do have first count bud and second count bud, etc. The, the, the space between buds we call internode, and we find a bud usually at the node of a muscadine wine. Um, so uh, first, I want to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. So often, if we do make cuts, if we do have to make cuts, which are close to the permanent structure, and we do not want to have fruit growth there, then we would have to we have, would have to cut off the first count bud. So we do that cut usually with respect to the basal bud. That's what I always say. So you want to you want to do not cut through your basal bud under no circumstance. So this is a cut which you do not want to do. The reason is because basal buds do have a lot of regenerative tissue, and that regenerative tissue helps to close this wound. Um, so if you cut through this regenerative tissue. You will not. There will this wound will not be closed and will always be an entry for pathogens and and other th diseases which can go into your trunk, which can go into your permanent tissue. You also do not want to cut through a butt or through 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 a uh, through an inner node um, for pretty much the same reasons. But you're also going to destroy the butt, so you do not want to do that. Um, the right way to cut is basically in the middle of the inner node. Keep at least the the diameter of length um, of the wood that you cut above the, 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 um, above the uh, butt that you do want to, that you do want to retain. So that's the right, the right way to cut. Um, we usually keep the basal butt as regenerative tissue, as I said, and we do not want to create a, a wound at the base of permanent wood. And we, of course, don't want to cut through any buds, and we do want to leave some wood to desiccate, and, and then we will cut it off next, next year. So now a lot of people prune mechanically, and uh, some people prune manually. I'm very aware of this. We're going to talk about manual pruning here and not about mechanical pruning. Um, manual pruning has a lot of disadvantages. It's very labor intensive, uh, but it, it provides the best uh, control of yield and diseases and of growth. And it is highly recommended because of that for fresh market. And uh, a very well-trained person can do this in 15 minutes. And usually it takes more like 20 to 30 minutes per vine. So it is very work intensive. And it's often a limiting factor in winter and laker acres. But however, I highly recommend even for people who manually, uh, who mechanically prune to rejuvenate their blocks in a two to four year um, uh, uh, time frame. Mechanical is less labor intensive. It's often done if you do uh, if you do processing uh, uh, grapes because it, it costs it's it's low low cost, but it provides a lot a lot less control of yield and disease, and also a lot less control on um, on uh, uh, growth control, and um, it's a. Uh, Often it should be done in rotation with manual pruning, and that would be then vineyard renovation every time. And uh, it's often used in large acreage of processing vineyards, as I said. There are a lot of other negative things about mechanical pruning. Um, uh, uh, a lot of that is disease control, uh, but also uh, vineyard longevity. And you also, if you do, uh, if you do a lot of uh, mechanical pruning, you do keep a lot of unnecessary wood that would often desiccate and then can can end up in your processing machinery. The same the same is true for leaves on other debris, which you do not want to have in your platter of your pre vine press, basically. So so that is something why I always recommend to rotate between mechanical and, and manual, even if your crop management does not necessarily suffer. If you do do five or six years of mechanical pruning in a row, your growth management and your disease management definitely suffers under that uh, procedure. So it is highly recommended to rotate um, between mechanical and manual pruning 
in a, even in the processing vignette. Um, so uh, we are going very much into the weeds of, 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 uh, of pruning. Um, we often talk about, if we look at if a developed spur, like this is, this is your several year old uh, spur. This is like about six, six, seven year old spur. You can first of all see that it didn't grow a lot in those six or seven years, which is exactly where you want to be. And then you can also see that it has essentially two zones. It has a zone around the, what, was, what was earlier the basal bud, which you can see there were like little cuts made every year. And that is what we call the head region. And it has an a, a elongation zone, which is essentially the spur, which grows every, every year a little bit. Uh, so those two zones have to be treated a little bit different uh, in, when it comes down to pruning. And not every... And not every um, and not every uh, a position does have a head region. It depends a lot on the cultivar, depends a lot on the uh, healthiness of that particular spur position. And of course, it depends a lot on how many butts and how many uh, 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 would you retain on your spurs above whether or not there will be something coming out of the head region. Um, so we first talk about the elongation zone, but I do wanna also show you what you do wanna avoid. So those are things which again gets you very quickly into like the antler kind of kind of uh, program, um, and that can, the antler program can be hosted by NASA because you're really growing already to the moon, and um, and uh, you can see here that you don't have any growth anywhere uh, near the base the, the 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 base, and all the growth is happening here up here at the top of the of the uh, spur position, which is not what you do want to do in the first place. So this is pretty hard to come back from, and I'm going to show you how to come back from in the, in the third part of the series. Um, so um, you do want to let your grow, spur grow a little bit every year, as I, as I say, and there's a technique to this. I, mean, you, I want to show you how this works. Uh, here you can see that you had, you had very little growth in less then three years, so you had like year year one, year two, year three, and you can see that each year you only have a little bit growth in this position. You can see also here that there were cuts made every year to, of other wood, which otherwise would have grown a lot more into space. So you really have to make your pruning cuts um, in a way that uh, you feel comfortable with the amount of growth you have per year um, of, uh, of, of spur growth. Um, Another thing which I do want to show you is that if you make those cuts, it is important to leave some, again, as we said, some wood for desiccation. Um, so what we usually say is you don't, you want to use, you want to leave like about a diameter length above the, the above the, the, the node, which you want to cut off. And uh, that uh, is, has been done here, it, you know, and, and that piece uh, will desiccate over the course of the year. And then you can cut this off the next year you make a cut. All right, so those are like kind of the basics. And, um, and now I would like to go over uh, how you develop a cordon with uh, how, you, how you can control growth uh, through spur pruning on a muscadine cordon. So this is very technically first, so just bear with me here. Um, so usually you have like your spur positions uh, established. This would be somewhere around year three of the wine. You have your first spur positions here. So then, you basically try to keep close to the cordon every time you do a cut. So you do, do not want to cut close to the cordon. What I mean by that is if you have a one-year-old wood that has, let's say, several, several nodes which you do want to keep as fruiting, as your new fruiting wood comes out in the year after that, your next year's cut will be somewhere at the first butt and not somewhere at the third butt. So you're going to have to retain several spur several spur positions or several spurs on one position in order to make the yield you want to have but you can retain easily nine or ten butts per spur position without losing uh without losing the ability to control your growth of a spur as i could just just show it in the picture before so um uh, i'm going to show you a little bit how this how this looks like um, so after, after pruning on your second year, you do, you do keep three nodes. I would recommend to usually, if you have a healthy wine, keep three nodes on a strong wine, uh, and leave two on weaker wines. And then those three nodes will develop, 
and, and those three nodes will develop your one year old, old wood. And then those on this wood, you also keep three butts. So after pruning, it, your, your spur will look like this. You have like one spur and you have like three shoots coming out of that. That is usually very healthy. I wouldn't go much, I wouldn't go longer than that because that often initiates a little bit gro uh, growth uh, suppression at the basal bud, which you do not want to have. And um, again, on weaker wines, I would go even shorter than that. But you know, can easily retain nine butts per spur position in your first in, in after your second year of uh, muscadine uh, of muscadine spur establishment. So then. You get a lot of growth out of this, and I don't want to go into this. This is very technically, but basically, each of those buds will at least will, will grow like one new shoot the year later, and then it all looks like a mess. But all those shoots will bear fruit for you. Um, so, and that is usually when people get into trouble because that is then when 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 wrong pruning decisions are made, and that is usually the time when the spur position grows really fast. So it's either the first year when you keep your spur position way too long, or it's the third year when you keep the wood, when you, when you get overwhelmed by the amount of wood which has grown out of your nine butts which you leave on your spur position. So a good way to think about this, if you have a situation like this, is like, do like, again, stay close to the cordon. That is always a golden rule. Stay close to the cordon if you do your cuts and make like what I call a helmet cut. So what you do is you cut back, um, what you do is you cut back each of those positions to one, to one, to, to the first node you know, and you leave three nodes on each on each of the new wood. And I'm going to show you in a second how this looks like. At the same time, if you do have a, a something coming out from the basal butt, you're going to retain that as well. So at the end, you do your helmet cut, and you will have something which looks like this. So you kept the first node here. You kept a little bit wood for desiccation, and uh, you kept three butts. On, on the new wood. And you do that on three different positions, on the basal butt, and you do that on two of your shoots. So sometimes, again, you do not have the basal butt, and then you can retain four butts uh, on, on each of those wines to, to make up for that. But again, you can retain nine butts very easily on, on, on a position like this. Um, and, uh, and then after growth occurs, it will a little bit look like this. So you, you, you do have a new growth coming out of those and that will uh, produce your fruit. So important is that you do not keep that shoot at the basal butt after, after, uh, after your third year. You do always want to cut this shoot at the basal butt and hope or, you know, if you, you know, and, and, and take new shoot from the basal butt to establish new fruit. So you do basically six cuts after that for every year. You basically do uh, like remain, keep like three butts per new shoot cut off your like your small butts like your old wood here at uh, uh, above the first butt and you cut off your basal your basal shoot from last year um and that will be will be look like this and from then on you do the same procedure every year um so if you do that you will stay close to the cordon because your wine structure will always uh, uh, grow just by one inner node uh, length because you always cut back to the first to the first butt um, after uh, your second year wood you always grow back to co cut back to the first butt and um, again where people get into trouble is if they don't do this if they for example have a structure like this and instead of making the cut down here they make the cut up here and leave like three of those uh, butts there and that will give you a lot of growth in one year. And that is usually how you get into the antler situation a lot, much, much faster than you would if you keep your inner nodes close to the corn. Um, so I can just show you how this, this is like three years of, of wood. Uh, this is your fourth year of wood. And then if you if you would keep instead of one inner node length, you would keep three inner node length, you would be already up in space somewhere here after four years, which is usually what's happening a, a lot of times. And then, you have to come back and make a very big cut here in your four or five year old wood. And that again, creates a big wound, creates a lot of desiccation and you will lose a lot of yield. So you can uh, control the growth of your spur by making the correct cuts close to the cordon every year. Um, again, this is a bad example. Uh, you can see here, you had like in the first year, a lot of growth going on directly here. And then 
uh, the growth control was happening up here. So you basically have established a head region here, but you still have this antler situation already here because this is a lot of growth, which all happened in one year. And then uh, you, you, you always, you try to establish new positions every time from this, from this area here, but this is not regenerative tissue. The regenerative tissue is down here. So this is a very, very good setup for later on an antler. And then you're gonna have to replace the entire position. Um, while this position, which is extreme, exactly the same age, has grown a lot slower than the other position. You can see here they have, again, established a head region down here at the regenerative tissue, and the rest of those antlers, uh, the, the rest of those spurs has grown very, very slowly. So now, uh, there are some things wrong here, or some things which you could do better here. The first is that you, you can see here there were a lot of too many nodes left. So you only want to keep like three nodes. And then the second is do you want you don't want to have this long elongation part here because this is a lot of growth already for one year. So you do not want to keep that part. So if you do make a cut here and a cut here, you keep three butts here, you keep three butts here, three butts here. That makes nine butts per this, for this position. And all of those butts will shoot, will give you good growth. And then you do the exact same procedure again the next year. So now this is really hard to do in the webinar. So I hope that you guys also uh, join our pruning workshops. Um, again, see pruning as a, as a tool to limit the growth of your spurs. The closer you stay on the cordon, the better it is for your wine health. And, uh, and if you make cuts, leave space for desiccation so that you don't get desiccation into your permanent structure. And uh, to try to remember the helmet, especially in the second year after the second year of spur, spur position establishment. If you remember the helmet and you cut around that imaginary helmet, you're in good shape already. And uh, always uh, you try to utilize the basal butt of your spur at the base of your spur, but do not use that to establish a new spur. Use that as one year old pruning, uh, one year old fruiting wood. So uh, that was pruning, and then in the next presentation, we will talk about uh, vineyard renovation.